Hey guys, SR Arcade, and I'm back today with my Silicon Graphics Octane workstation that I picked up probably close to a year ago. I'd made a follow-up video uh, with this uh, machine, but I, I ended up losing it, so it never got its way to YouTube. But figured now would be a good time to follow up on what happened with this project. Last time I left you off, I had this machine taken apart on my floor, talking about how excited I was. And I put it back together later that day on and tried to power it up, and uh, sure enough, it didn't start up. It actually needed a whole new power supply. So lucky me, I found a brand new power supply. Well, not brand new, but used on eBay. I think I only paid less than $40 for it shipped to my house. So that solved the problem, and I was able to boot up into the system. As you can see, it's powered up, and uh, it's got... Uh, I'll show you in just a minute. We'll, sh we'll talk about some of the specs here. I was just running a diagnostic test and I just see uh, an error here. I'll zoom in on that. But anyway, it is running IRIX 6.5. I was able to boot up. I was able to determine that it has a pair of um, R10,000 uh, processors. Uh, not all the RAM is showing. Um, what else? There was probably about 20 some odd users on the machine. Uh, I did not have any passwords, so I was kind of stuck out of the OS for a while. Uh, I was thinking, how am I going to get in there? So. This, as you know, has no CD-ROM. Uh, it doesn't come with an internal CD-ROM. you got to use an external. I'm thinking, gosh, where am I going to get an external SCSI CD-ROM? And then a light bulb went off, and I realized my Capcom CPS-3 has a SCSI CD-ROM drive. So I was able to basically park the CPS-3. I actually put it on top of here and then borrowed the CD-ROM drive. I powered it, and I was able to use the IRIX... Um, utility disk, get in there and reset the root password. So Capcom CPS3 saved the day. And then I was able to get in the machine. Um, I did some basic network stuff, just uh, changed the host name and set up some of the network properties because it was trying to join some network that didn't exist. So the booting took forever. Um, it turns out this machine looks like it belonged to a government subcontractor um, that specialized in aeronautical uh, research, uh, flight uh, type stuff. So there's some cool simulation software on here, which I do not have license keys for, and they no longer it no longer starts. But uh, let's get into the thing. I just finished doing a um, full-on diagnostic test because I noticed every time I tried to pull up anything with some texture to it, let me get this angle better, um, that it would just <laughs> uh, the it would crash and burn. It would basically reset. So what I noticed here after running the diagnostics, I don't know if you can read that or not, but you can see uh, TRAM test failed. Failure uh, detected on TMEZ board. So that's the tr uh, basically the texture modules uh, that I pointed out in my last video. What likely could be a problem is that I did not, um, either the graphics board, which is an MXI, I confirmed, is not seated 100% properly, or I need to reseat the texture modules. I don't think they're bad, so I don't think that kind of thing goes bad. But anyway, so the diagnostics works. Um, the machine boots up, I can log in. It has some software. I will share with you in just a second what's on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start the system up. Uh, it's going to take a little while, so I'll cut real quick. Okay, so I'm back here at the login screen. I'm just going to log in as root so I have full access to everything. And we'll take a look at some of the features of the system. Whoa, you can see right here I was playing with PowerFlip before it crashed. Um, runs nice and smooth. I forgot how to flip the stupid thing after you uh, you start it up. Uh, but no textures, just straight up, uh, you know, straight up rendering solid surfaces. Um, yeah, double click doesn't work, space doesn't work. I don't know how to flip the stupid thing. Anyway. If I close this really quick, um, I'll open Power Flip again. There it is. I mean, that's really smooth. Let's go display the 
it's running 60 frames a second. There's 34,320 polygons a second in processing. Um, 572 polygons for the frame. Um, you can probably open many of these and have them flip and do cool stuff. Um, to kind of compare this performance to what I had available to me uh, for the same year, I was using a Power Macintosh 603E at home and a 604E at school uh, with a 3D software called Infinity at the time, and I think I could render one frame about this quality took the better part of 30 seconds, and here we are doing it 60 frames a second. So you can kind of get an idea how ahead of the curve this kind of technology was as opposed to what you could play with at home. And keep in mind, what I had at home wasn't exactly top of the line, but it wasn't shabby either. It was it was pretty standard for its day. Oh, we got Doom on here. You like playing good old game of Doom? <laughs> SGI Doom. You know, everyone's got to have Doom. I actually played a game on here and it was kind of funny because I haven't played the original Doom in so long. It plays fast. Frame rate's pretty awesome, even though it's a 2D game. Um, there's a whole bunch of demos in here. I got to be careful with what I launch because I will, I will crash anything that has a texture to it. Will crash the machine right now. So let me just show you what's going on here on the system. Go into the uh, system manager, uh, and we'll go about this system. I'll zoom in here. So you can see I have 295 megahertz MIPS R10,000 CPUs. Um, it says I have 384 megabytes of main memory. I should, I'm missing about 500 megs right there, or 400 megs, because if you add the two pair 256s and the 128, I should have more memory than that. I don't know if you have hit some kind of ceiling with this or something. Um, it's only one meg of secondary data cache. It's on IRIX 6.5. Uh, it's got the built-in audio processor, but the MXI graphics board. So it has 14 RAMs. Um, just some general information. I'm running 10, 1280 by 1024. By the way, this monitor I got is an NEC multi-sync um, LCD 2070VX. I bought this for $9 at a Goodwill. And this monitor for its day was like top of the line, top dollar NEC. I mean, this is something you probably could have paired this workstation with. Um, this would have been a hot monitor to have. I remember uh, my first 19-inch LCD cost over $500, um, and it came from NEC. Okay, so continuing on to software, we can take a list of installed software products. Um, there's quite a bit. A lot of these are like little built-in utilities and so forth. Let's see if I can maybe make this a little easier to view. But it looks like um, I, I'm not familiar with a lot of software for IRIX, but uh, I have this Workshop uh, and Workshop MPF seems to be an industrial product. And good old Apple Talk. Um, there's uh, C compilers, there's a C compiler. On this, I don't know what it is. This EPF seems to have a lot of pieces to it. Terrain, uh, terrainscape, weatherscape. Like I said, there was some, uh, there was some simulation, aeronautical simulation stuff on here with uh, jet planes and stuff. I couldn't run any of it because um, the software won't launch. It looked like Photoshop was on here at one point. I saw a Photoshop icon, but it's gone now. So that's just kind of an idea of some of the software. 
Not much I know about that. So I'm just kind of, uh, let's see anything else I can talk about here. See how memory usage looks. So what I'd really like to do is get that texture module working because it's it's kind of hindering me from playing with some of the cooler aspects of the system. So what I think I'll do is I might break here and I might end up pulling the uh, graphics board out of Dumbo here and trying to check those texture modules, make sure they're okay, try resetting them, um, and then maybe bring it back and go through the uh, test process one more time. Okay, so in attempts to fix my texture issue, I pulled the graphics board from the unit, and I pulled off texture module one over here on the right. There it is. That's what it looks like on the back. You can see there's just these two little sockets and they just line up. It snaps into place and then there's this little nylon fastener right here that goes in and that kind of holds it inside. No issues there. I went to pull up this socket and well the nylon fastener broke. There's the other piece there. Uh, no big deal. I mean I can get another one. The problem is when I tried to lift this off, it was really stuck hard on part of this and it lifted this whole socket. See? This all lifted off the board. That sucks because that's a pretty massive problem. In fact, it's straight up broke. There, look at that. So surface mount uh, socket, it's intact over there, but this may have been the root of the problem. I mean, it might have this this may have been broken before, and it wasn't making good contact. Now, the good news is I believe I can fix this. Um, I can push this on. I can very carefully align these pieces. And I can use uh, an iron to heat this up and, and just dab it back on, and it should make full contact. Um, it's going to take some time to get to do that. So I think that's the end of the video today. I was noticing these blue jumper wires. I don't know if someone's repaired this before, or those are from the factory. It's hard to tell. It's a beautiful job. Whoever did this work, it's, uh, it's definitely top-notch uh, repair work. Uh, someone knows what they're doing. When you have a machine with a graphics board that costs as much as a, a compact car, I'm sure you get it fixed instead of just replacing it. So I can see why they would do repairs, but th this if it is a repair, that's another sign that this board may have had issues. And it's probably why they sold the machine. Getting an MXI board uh, is a little tricky. They're a little rare, a little far harder to come by. The, uh, there's other graphics card you can put in here, the lower models. Uh, they're not so bad. You might find one for $50, $100 here or there. These kinds of parts are getting hard to source, though. You know, there's not a big following for silicon graphics. And, uh, you know, you get lucky on an eBay auction. Uh, the uh, SGI forums out there don't isn't really active all that much, so it's kind of a dying fad, dying hobby. But we'll see what I can do. Hopefully I can uh, surface mount repair that and we'll give the texture ram another try. If not, maybe I can just run with one texture ram module. Who knows? So I'll try a combination of things and I'll make a part three to this video and we'll see if I can get some texture mapping happening. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you later.